What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hicker Scuba Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button over here and ding that little bell as well. Boy, you'll be notified every time we upload new content. Here behind me is a floating rock. That floating rock is actually holding the intake and I apologize if I'm out of breath. We literally just got out of the water. It is freezing, freezing cold out here today. But underneath that floating rock is a water intake system. And basically, this is just held on with a cable and a chain to keep that intake up off the bottom. What we had to do is actually go down today, hook a new uh, cable around it or new chain system and connect it to the rock. Problem is, this one thing weighed about five, 600 pounds. So we had to go down with a lift bag, a thousand pound lift bag, hook it to it, lift it up to the surface and take a chain down, wrap it around, hook the uh, cable system to it and keep it floating using the lift bag until we got it tensioned where we need it and we was able to drain the lift bag and get it back into place. But as you can see, rock's floating. The uh, intake system's floating uh, under it. That way it's not down in the silt and the mud. And they can actually uh, pump the water out of this pond. And I didn't get to tell you guys where we were at. We're at the, actually the Biltmore um, Golf Course here, the Biltmore Country Club. It's near the Biltmore House here in Asheville, North Carolina. If you've never been, definitely take your family to it. It's a beautiful place to go, especially this time of the year uh, when it's winter time, it's Christmas season, it's a great place to go. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm gonna walk you through exactly what we're doing and then I'll give you some final thoughts here at the end. Alright guys, so as we make our descent here, I'll just kind of walk you through the process of what we're doing. Basically this first little drop down is just to inspect the water intake system, see what kind of conditions it's in, to see what we're going to need to lift it up um, to get it where we need it. Now since this thing has broke free and has settled down in the silt, it's, it is partially covered with the silt and so we got to figure out a way to get up underneath it with a strap so that we can hook a bag to it and lift it up to the height that we need. I'm also inspecting inside the gray area here just to see how much debris inside of it. Um, this too is one of the intakes that this company can't back flush so we're trying to determine do we need to take the grate off, clean it out the best we can and reinstall the grate. Thankfully in this case we didn't have to do that. We were able to just lift it up. Once it kind of settled down in the seal area, uh, it pretty much shut itself off so it didn't take in as much silt and mud and debris as what uh, they, they thought it did originally. But we're just finishing up our inspection here, just seeing the condition of it and what we're going to have to do to it. And then we're going to come up and discuss with the surface crew um, about the materials that we need. And then, of course, we'll go back down. We will attempt to lift it up. Um, and then kind of get it placed where we need it so that we can drag the float over and attach it to it. But here we're finishing our inspection and we're just going to come up, discuss what we find and let the uh, service crew that's helping us there at the service, let them know what we've got. And then of course we'll go back down. Now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and rig up our systems. Basically, I've just got a steel 72 here that I'm going to use for uh, our 1,000-pound lift bag from Subsalve. And if you guys are ever curious what we use as far as tanks, well, primarily steel 72s and aluminum 80s. Uh, I have a whole fleet of them. They work great for the application that we use them for. This is just an old Sherwood regulator, first stage. 
and it's just a low pressure inflator hose same thing that you would use uh, for your bc now some of our lift bags from sub salve we do use compressor units on um, and we have a manifold that we can control how much air is going in and out but for the application of what we're doing today and given that we're only at about eight foot of depth um, being able to control how much air goes in the bag just simply by turning the valve knob on and off uh, makes things a whole lot simpler for us plus the distance that we had to travel uh, makes a little bit more sense to do it this way too because uh, we had to drive quite a few uh, quite a few miles to get up to this particular location and not being having to haul all that equipment makes things easier as well but now that we're ready to go down we've actually got everything rigged we got the bottle hooked up to the bag you can kind of see it hanging there uh, we're directly over the intake our first uh, order of business now is to attach the strap in a manner that's not going to hinder us later whenever we hook the uh, chain and cable system uh, to the intake so if you look real close that's a manifold system there it's basically or a coupling if you will where the intake itself and the intake pipe connect and what we're going to do is we're going to strap um, in behind that so that as we lift it up it allows the front of the coupling the space there um, it kind of frees it up for the chain that we're going to be using but that's what we're doing now. We're going to work together as a team. We're going to slide the strap system up underneath and get it in behind that coupling area there. And then, of course, we will secure the uh, strap system together, hook it back to it, lift it up. Um, there's really no exact science to how we do this. I really like girth hitches when we do this because they're easy to remove when you need to remove. Plus, they're kind of adjustable as well. I can slide it to one side or the other. So that's basically what I'm doing now. Um, I'm just going to take one end of the strap, put it through the loop of the other end, create a girth hitch. Now, unfortunately, since we are not very deep, my strap is a little bit too long uh, to just stop there. Because if I was just to hook the bag directly to that loop, the bag would already be about halfway out of the water and I wouldn't be able to get the lift that I needed. So what I'm actually going to do is once I create that girth hitch, I'm actually going to wrap the strap around itself a couple more times, create a loop and then pull that loop through the working end of my strap system and that basically takes every bit of excess out of that strap and it allows me to hook my lift bag directly onto or directly at the point of contact of the intake uh, pipe so that's going to give us a whole lot more lift as a matter of fact it's going to give us the total amount of lift that we need which in this case being a thousand pounds of lift so by doing that once again it pulls the bag further underneath the water it gives us the maximum lifting capacity of the bag itself and of course it gets rid of any excess um, strap that would be in our way while we're working but here now that we've got everything hooked up uh, you'll see that i'm going to go ahead and start inflating the bag this is a slow process even though i'm at a very very shallow depth i want to go slow with it uh, just so that we don't get anything entangled or we don't come up very rapidly yeah we're only about eight foot of water but we still want to take it easy and slow when we do this um, because it's nothing really important guys it's just your life so you can see the bag is starting to inflate now. We're slowly starting to bring this intake pop up. Um, and of course my, my dive buddy there, he is just verifying everything's good as we lift it. He's probably only a foot or two under the water. He could pop up really quick if he needed to to, to tell me to stop or whatnot. But as we uh, continue to inflate here, we're just going to get it up as high as we can. That's going to give us a little bit more work room underneath the intake pop uh, so that we can run chains and everything else. Running a a very light toe strap uh, is one thing but trying to run chains and stuff that's heavy underwater uh, is completely different so if we can get that pop up as high as we can at least where we got about two or three foot to work underneath it it makes hauling heavy chains and things like that a whole lot easier so now what I'm doing is I've swam back over to the surface crew and I'm going to go ahead and retrieve the chain for him that we're going to be using. This chain is basically just, if you kind of think of it like a hoist system, uh, basically I'm using it the same way I just used the toe strap. It's just going to be wrapped around uh, the intake pipe. We're going to put it in front of the coupling instead of behind the coupling this time because I want as much lift as possible up near the front of the intake. So I'm going to put it up in front of the coupling itself the only difference though instead of putting it 
as we're putting it through itself kind of like a girth hitch like we did with the toe strap we're actually going to connect it up through another coupling if you will or another ring system at the bottom of the floating rock system that's going to go up there and i'll show you briefly here shortly we're going to create a situation where if we have a failure in the chain maybe the chain rust out or something like that it will still be connected and they won't have that problem of it falling through uh, and we had kind of discussed well what if the cable that's below the floating rocket broke versus the chain uh, the cable is just barely got any tension on it it's just got a little bit of weight pulling down on it thanks to Archimedes principle that cable is actually not got as much tension as you think because everything is buoyed up in the water even if it's too heavy to float it's still buoyed up through Archimedes principle however that chain it allows a little bit of friction to be created as it's going up and down with the water and that chain the links in the chains can wear out um, and, and it happens we have it here in our lake as well and some of the things that we have sunk here in our lake uh, we have buoys attached via chains and those chains rust out very very quickly so what we decided to do in the event that the chain rust or it gets uh, too much friction created as it's sliding in and out of the coupling area we decided to put an extra loop in it and I'll show you here briefly how we're going to do that but we wanted to do it to eliminate a failure point in it um, just you know so we wouldn't have to come back up quite as often but here basically what we're doing is we're just attaching the chain around the front side of the coupling and we're going to temporary or temporarily secure it with just an anchor shackle until we can get the uh, floating rock system over there one thing I do want to note, when you do stuff like this, especially if you're in high altitude mountains like we are here, or it's extremely cold water and you have zero dexterity, uh, as you can see, I'm struggling a little bit just getting the bolt in the anchor shackle or the chain. Uh, take your time when you do this. If I was to happen to drop this, this bolt here, the chances of me trying to find it or the chances of me finding it is going to be slim to none because the silt in the bottom of this pond is, is very, very deep. So the pond might only be eight foot deep but the silt might go down two or three feet so if I was to drop this bolt and it hit the top of the silt it's it's going to be a goner so I want to take my time make sure I don't drop it make sure everything's good and secure one of the things that we typically do on our lift bags because it's the same anchor shackle system it's just a little bit bigger is we'll just put rope on it or a little bit of string that attaches the bolt to the anchor shackle and I'll put a little twist in it so I can twist and untwist the bolt without it causing any problems in the event uh, if I if I did drop it or whatnot but now that we got that we're going to temporarily just lay the chain on the grate we're going to go ahead and come back up to the surface and prepare the uh, float system which like i said it's a floating rock is all it is but at the bottom of it in the center you'll see here briefly it's got a uh, cable system that comes straight down out of the center of it and then it comes to another little coupling or a coupling link and that's what we're actually going to attach the chain to but here we're back at the surface and you can see the floating rock system now it's not that very it's not really heavy so to speak it's more cosmetics than anything uh, but one thing you will notice there is that it's got that that centerpiece there with a, the reinforced cable and it's got that little coupling you can see there so I'm just going to go ahead and grab onto it and swim it over and float it over to get it in position and then I'll change places with the other diver I'll let him take control of the rock and then I'll go back down and re um, you know prepare the chain for it to be able to connect to but as I descend down here uh, you'll notice what I'll do is I'll take that chain and I'm gonna go through the link at the bottom of that cable in one direction I'll take the other end of the chain and I'm gonna go through the link in the opposite direction um, and create basically a crisscross in it and then when I put the secondary anchor shackle in the chain what that does is if one side fails then we have a backup if the other side fails then of course we have a backup and then we're going to do it one more time to eliminate any extra chain from just kind of flopping around there or uh, we'll double secure it so imagine that chain comes up it loops through the link twice in different directions we're going to secure it directly below that link and then we'll take the excess chain come all the way back down to the intake pipe itself and we're going to secure it again at the bottom with another shackle or another little adjustable chain link there 
and like I said what that allows us to do is to eliminate failure points if one side does fail then of course or it gives us a redundancy system if we do have a failure point if one side fails then we have a backup as well but here you can see we've already got one through I'm telling him to run the chain through the uh, opposite side and then we'll, of course we will connect that anchor shackle through both ends that gives us good solid connection there and then we'll slide down to the bottom reconnect it as well and in reality you got four connection points points at that point so if the first one fails you got a backup if the second one fails you got another backup and if the third one fails you got a fourth backup and then of course if the fourth one fails then first of all the unlikelihood event of that ever happening is slim to none but if it did fail then of course they'll just call us back out and we'll repeat the whole process of what we're doing today but anytime we do a job like this we try our best to make it as secure as possible so that we don't have to come back yeah we're getting paid to do this but we want to do a good quality job so that they'll hire us in the future for other different types of jobs and you know we really take pride in the quality of the work that we get but now that we got everything connected we've got uh, a couple of different connection points there everything's nice and secure all that's left is to come up slowly deflate our bag remove the strap system and just make sure that the intake's going to uh, float up on its own without any type of assistance all right guys, so we're all finished up. Like I said, it is blistering cold out here today. I'm still freezing. I've got to go inside and let my suit dry out or I'll let it warm up because it's actually froze. I'm not sure I get it unzipped right now. But uh, I'm gonna go in and warm up, get changed out. We got everything going the way it needs to be, which is a good thing. We had a very successful dive. Um, but if you got any questions on salvage work like this, just drop me a comment down below. I try to answer it the best I can. Well, guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share this video as well. We got a ton of salvage, salvage videos coming up because that's all we've been doing the last two weeks is underwater salvage work. So stay tuned for those. But I hope you enjoyed today's video. Once again, give me a thumbs up. Guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.